Hi, welcome to the first video for WR674 taught at Colorado State University. This is an environmental data analysis class with a focus on learning general programming tools. Um, so for today's class, uh, we're going to just start pretty easy and install R, R Studio, And we're going to go over data types, different data types that you can use in R, and functions that uh, you need to understand how functions work. So to get started, you first, and you should do this all before class, you need to first download R. So typically what I do is I just type into any browser, download R, and then I want to go to the rproject.org, click on that, and we're going to get the newest version, Action of the Toes. Um, and if you click on this, you're going to get the, the sort of tarball, which we don't actually need, so you can get a easier version here if you go to the download R section. And now you're going to pick a CRAN mirror, and all these mirrors mean is um, where you're going to download the data from. So you want to go to the United States. You want to pick somewhere relatively close. You can see I've picked Berkeley before, and I'll pick it again here. Um, so I have a Windows computer. Obviously, if you have a Mac, you do that here, or a Linux here. Um, and I'm going to say that I'm going to install R for the first time, if you're doing it for the first time. Um, you can do other ways. There's other, there's actually packages that update R, but we'll just do this for now. Uh, and so we're going to download it for the Windows. And then once you've downloaded it, you want to just install it with the base configuration. You want to make sure you let it install. Okay. And then you're going to click through all this next. I actually already installed this, so I'm going to skip this step. Once you've downloaded R, the next thing you're going to want to do is download RStudio, which is the um, graphical interface we'll use to work with R. So here you go to RStudio.com. You want to go to Products, RStudio, RStudio Desktop, and then you're going to download it. And it should be free. You're not getting the server kind. So you're going to download RStudio Desktop, download it here. Get match the system you have. So I have a Windows again. I'll save this file and install it. Again, I've already installed all this on my computer, so I'm going to hit cancel, but you would hit next and go through all this. Now we want to open our studio. When you open our studio, this is the interface that you'll see. In the top left, it'll say console, um, terminal, and jobs. We'll explain. I'll explain terminal and jobs as we get further into the semester. Um, in the top right, you have another window pane that has the environment. This is just variables that you've saved. You also have history, which is the sort of history of code that you've. Um, been working with and this is a good place to go if you accidentally have your computer crash and you lose some code it'll be saved in here um, and then connections is, is if you're connected to any server that you're working on in the bottom right you'll have a sort of file organizing folder you'll have a plots section packages this is just packages that are loaded I'll explain packages in a little bit um, you'll also have help files over here and then you have your viewer which is an interactive plot viewer um, on the left hand side where we have the console, this is where we directly interact with R. So anything I do here will will sort of tell the computer to do the tasks that I ask. And this is where you do sort of classic um, sort of computer science 101 tasks like print hello world. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the function called print and I'm telling it to print the text called hello world and if I hit enter it'll do hello world. Um, in R, when you use functions, a function is indicated by an opened and closed parentheses. So if I did something like print hello world, rather print hello world, which looks very similar but does not have the parentheses, it'll give me an error because it doesn't understand what I'm trying to do without the um, open and closed parentheses. And that's because functions take specific commands and so they, in R you need those parentheses. Um, another function that you could use is something like sum of 1 and 2. And that'll tell you that the sum of 1 and 2 is 3. Um, and 
functions take specific data types. So when I use sum in this case, and I type in one and two, it knows that those are numerics. So if I do one, four, five, it's going to again assume that those are numerics. But let's see if I put in something in quotes. So if I put sum one, sum four, and sum five in quotes, what those quotes are telling R is that that is a string or a character type. So this is essentially saying these are words. And if I now I try to do sum on those, it's going to give me an error because it's saying, hey, the type that you gave me was a character, and I don't know how to sum characters. I only know how to sum numerics. Um, and this matters a lot because in your data sets, you're going to have different uh, data types. You're going to have characters, which might be like something like a side ID, um, or you're going to have numerics, which might be like the value of discharge at a site. Um, and so different functions can do different things depending on what the data type actually is. So another way to think about um, data types is how R thinks of them. So when we have something like just a one, that is a, sort of a single value. But typically, when we're working with larger data sets, what we actually have is a sort of um, what's called a vector in R of values. So we can do one, two, three, four, five. And now that's going to be printed as a vector. What the C is doing here is concatenating or putting those next to each other. So you can think about this like filling out a spreadsheet where you uh, have different rows. And in R, we can assign a vector. So we can say starting vector. And the little arrow here says, I want this value to be assigned. And then we can do the same thing. C, one, two, three, four, five. And now we have this thing that you see it popped up in the global environment over here. We have this object called starting vector. And it's a numeric. And it has five um, essentially data slots. And the, the values in those data slots are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, and if we just type in that vector name, starting vector, R is going to print that out. We could also do something like print starting vector. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to print the data. We can do sum starting vector. So now we're using the same function on that vector. It's going to tell us that it's 15. Um, and this all depends on the fact that this, that that vector is a numeric. So if we did something else, like starting vector, starting character, and we did C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now R, when I, because I put in quotes, it's going to have the same sort of general structure. It's still a vector, but it's a vector of characters. And that's what this means, CHR, over here in the top right. So it's a character vector with five slots. And they're filled with the character vector 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, if I try sum on this character vector, it's not going to work. So this is just a sort of really basic introduction to um, how R thinks about different data sets. Um, it can hold things like vectors, uh, lists, and matrices. We're going to get into those more as we sort of talk about your different data, data sets. Um, but the most common data type you're going to actually end up using is called a data frame. And a simple way to create a data frame is just using the function called data frame. So I'll do starting df. I'm going to assign it a thing, and I'm going to do data frame. And I'm going to say, um, vec I'll say numeric. And I'm going to make that equal to starting vector. And then I'm going to just do a comma, and I'm going to assign a new one. Oops. I meant to do character equals starting character. And now I have this thing called a data frame. And the data frame is much more similar to what you, you're used to using in Excel, where you're going to have essentially columns and rows with names. So now if I just say starting DF and I print that out, now I have a data frame where one row or one column is called numeric and the other column is called character. Um, we can even use another function called string or sorry, str is structure, and we can say, what is the structure of the starting df? And what that's going to tell us is, what does R think this data set is made up of? And so it thinks it's made up of a numeric, 1 through 5, or and a factor. And what a factor is, is just an organized uh, character. So basically, it, it's um, saying, essentially, there's different levels for these things. And we're, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there's 
R is in the back end coding that is one, two, three, four, five. Factors are really kind of dangerous and you should probably try to avoid them at all costs, which is why we will be using a um, package that is different from the base data frame. We'll be using something called uh, read R, which creates a different kind of data frame that avoids factors. Um, and I just used a term you may or may not know, which is called packages. And so when I was talking about functions, like sum, uh, that is just a sort of simple way to, to perform tasks, but not all tasks come with base R. So let's say you wanted to do something like plot uh, spatial data. Well, base R doesn't have any spatial um, understanding of, of spatial data, so you have to download a package that can handle spatial, spatial data. And the one, one of the packages that I like that handles spatial data is a package called SF. So here we're going to use this command called install packages. We're going to install SF. And now it's going to go to the internet and install this package called SF. And SF is a package called simple features, and it makes working with spatial data in R uh, much easier. And once you've downloaded this package, which will take a second, um, we can load it by typing in library SF. And once I have called it into the library, that means in this R session, it's, it, it's ready to do spatial analyses. We're not going to do that right now, but um, we can, if you wanted to, you could use something like ST as SF, which is a way of converting lat long coordinates into a spatial object, like a shape file. Um, so we could use this function that is not in base R, it actually only comes in with um, SF the package. And so that's just a really quick introduction into functions, different data types, and uh, why you might want to use packages because they really extend the ability of R to do all kinds of tasks. So we can do time series analysis, we can do, we can download data from the internet using packages. Um, there's a lot of tools, so you really are going to not just use base R, we're going to use a lot of packages. And the, the primary package that um, we're going to use in this class is called tidyverse and that's just a way of thinking about data that's really consistent and I think the easiest way to, to work with data so another package that you're going to want to install before class is tidyverse and actually tidyverse is a package of packages so there's a bunch of packages that it's going to install mine's already loaded so that's why it uh, installed so fast but uh, we'll go over sort of why I use the tidy tidyverse in class and um, if you get to this point before class, you should be good, and then we'll, we'll do some more things in class together. But I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.